Talking about turbulence that strikes with no warning, uh, why it's becoming a bit more common as well. Julian, a very good morning to you. Good morning. I mean, I suppose we've all got a story or two of uh, being in a version of this kind of event. I was in one um, shortly after sort of wind shear was discovered, and I used to fly a lot up and down the east coast of America, flying from Atlanta up to New York, which was famous for sort of thunderstorms and planes being grounded. And we dropped, I think I asked the pilot, it seemed like an awful lot. He said it was about 200 feet. Um, and the woman sitting next to me, who wasn't wearing a seatbelt, had went straight through the um uh, the overhead um baggage compartment and i didn't move because i'd had my seatbelt on yes yes that is one of the things i keep asking people to do uh by all means loosen your seatbelt but don't take it off completely because you will find that uh, uh with turbulence thunderstorms any sort of weather event if you are going to drop, say, a couple of thousand feet and you do fly up towards the ceiling, then you will be injured. Mm. But if you're safely strapped in your seat, that's fine. And I know people say, well, if I'm going to the bathroom, I need to do that. Well, fine. But when you go back to your seat, just put the strap back mm. on again. Yes, so exactly. that is, uh, And it seems as though the unfortunate timing of this probably didn't help because it was around about 90 minutes away from Singapore and landing and so they were serving breakfast and which meant that a lot of the crew were up and about and I suppose people would be waking up from from sleeping. Yes and also uh, at, uh, on, on these flights uh, they won't actually have any warning of it. Mm. Uh, sometimes it comes up on the radar, it comes off as a Doppler effect. Yes. Uh, the radar works in different colour blocks and uh, sometimes if these two blocks merge, you can, you've got a pretty good indication that there's a turbulence ahead. Mm. But uh, usually they fly over the clouds and they fly around storms, but sometimes uh, there's just no warning and unfortunately get caught out. Yes, because of course clear air turbulence, which is what we seem to be saying this probably was, is exactly that, isn't it? Clear air turbulence, you can't see it. No, you can't. And uh, normally it's quite down the list of perils, if you like. Mm. Uh, the most uh, the mo most common peril or, or the most peril likely to cause an accident is a thunderstorm. Yeah. Things like that. So in the table of uh, perils, it comes right the way down. So this is very unusual indeed. But there again, we've had very strange weather events lately. Mm. I haven't, we've had uh, flooding in Dubai. Yes. When did that happen? Well, so, they really, had they had something like a month's worth of rain in in you know a couple of days, but I mean they've also been seeding the clouds in Dubai for their own purposes, and so sun, suddenly you find that there are outside influences. Interesting that as well you say that in that part of the world down near um, sort of coming out of um, um, Myan Myanmar and coming to southeast, sort of come, coming to near near parts of Thailand, there are pockets there for some reason because of the the tropical nature, I suppose, of of the of the temperatures. Yes, so that's where hot air and cold air meet. Uh, that causes uh, uh, a kind of eruption. Also, look at the coastline as well, because mm. where you have hills, mountains, whatever, this creates wind shear and basically means the wind goes down, the wind comes up and then creates a vacuum because obviously flying is all about vacuums mm. because uh, when you fly, a vacuum is created on top of the wing and that lifts the aircraft. Right. So change the parameters there then something else is going to change with the aircraft right now not normally your pilots they're very experienced and they will be able to anticipate uh, a lot of these things or they've had a good briefing mm. from air traffic control and from the controllers on the way and from other aircraft uh, because they all talk to each other and they can squawk up a warning True. but uh, unfortunately this one didn't work and how, I mean, it's, it's a terrifying thought for, for those of us who, who, who know, I mean, I know a little bit about air, air travel and, 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 the, and the means by which it happens, only because I covered so many air crashes in the 80s. But, you know, to pilot one of these planes, which is so big, this was a Boeing 777. I mean, what would that be like for the, um, for the pilot who's trying to control basically driving through this clear air turbulence? Well, uh, quite horrendous, but the point is his professional training kicks in and so his feelings on the matter wouldn't come into it huh. he would go through a routine and uh, he'd try and make sure he could try and get out of it or there's a recovery a mode that he can go in and uh, they did recover from it so there yes there's sadly there's a death we think caused by heart related mm. uh, matter but the point is there was a death and there have been many injuries and some are very serious indeed 
And literally, if you fly out of your seat and hit the ceiling, uh, well, yes, people are going to have head injuries. Apparently, one woman was catapulted forward down the aisle and uh, really, she sustained quite a few injuries. Yeah. And then you point out in your piece that, you know, the suggested kind of brace position is probably quite a good idea. Hopefully nobody ever wants to go to go into that position when you're listening to, you know, the, 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 the speech at the beginning when you get on the plane. You can see most people are not really paying attention. But if you do put yourself in that brace position where you put your head down and hold your hands over your head, you're not going to get hit by anything flying around. Well, this is it, because you are protecting your head, which uh, it, it does need protection. You're not wearing a crash helmet, so that's the right. next thing. So that is why they get you to go into this really awkward position. But it does work. Uh, yeah. They know it works, and a lot of people have had their lives saved by doing it. And, so, And for people, what... for people, Julian, waking up this morning thinking, you know, we've booked our summer holiday, we're going to Mallorca or we're going to, um, you know, Tenerife or somewhere like that. I mean, it's as much less likely to happen, this kind of thing, on the European flight path, isn't it? It, it, will pro it will happen to some flights, let's be fair about it, but nothing like this. This was an exceptional mm. weather event. Uh, so... Uh, you might get a bit of turbulence, but most most routes that we have going out of the UK, we can actually vector around these. Right. And so it shouldn't be a problem. And remember, you've got very experienced crews and you've only got to look at flight radar to see or any of the other apps to see how many planes are actually in the air at any one time. Yes. So they are literally... An awful lot. <laughs> You would have to say. Um, Julian, thank you very much. Good to talk to you. Julian Bray, uh, aviation expert. There.